Hey everyone, it's Adam. I have some exciting news and a PSA to share about the new Switcher update from Blackmagic Design. So just a few days ago, Blackmagic released the 9.5 firmware update for its ATEM Switchers, and it only works on the following Switchers. The ATEM Mini Pro, ATEM Mini Pro ISO, ATEM Mini Extreme, ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, the ATEM SDI Pro, and the ATEM SDI Extreme ISO. If you have one of these switchers, you're going to want to download the 9.5 update and update your switchers ASAP because now your switcher will have support for things like SRT, the ability to customize your webcam output, and the ability to customize the way your multi-view looks like. In addition, I'm going to explain one secret feature that was not in the release notes. But first, let me give you a PSA about how the webcam output works. So with MixEffect, 2.1, you have the ability to use USB view, which is a way to take the output from your ATEM and plug it directly into your mix effect device and see the multi view or any other kind of output. And the way that worked was you went a HDMI out from the auxiliary port on an ATEM, like an ATEM Mini Pro, or SDI out from an ATEM SDI. Then you would convert it back to uh, USB webcam, so a UVC compliant device using a capture card, uh, usually going through a hub, uh, a USB hub, and then you plug that into mix effect device, and then you get the USB view. So let me show you how that works now that we can configure the webcam output. So I'm going to switch over to my camera here, and we see we have an ATEM uh, Mini Extreme, and it's plugged in using the USB out right into mix effect. So over in the auxiliary section of mix effect, there's a new output here, aux3, which you can now configure to the multi-view. So right now it's set to multi-view, but I can set it to different uh, inputs. Now there's nothing plugged into this ATEM Mini Extreme, but I can show you colors, bars, preview, multi-view, just like that. So this now appears in mix effect, the current version of mix effect, uh, and your ATEM switcher, so an additional auxiliary port. Now, one caveat is, is that if you're plugged into an ATEM Mini Pro, like the one back here, you're going to see all the inputs, but the ATEM Mini Pro and the ATEM SDI Pro can only show, you can only configure through the webcam output program, preview, and multi-view, while on the Extreme lineup, so that's the ATEM Mini Extreme, ATEM Mini Extreme ISO, and the ATEM SDI Extreme ISO, you can configure any of these inputs to go out through the webcam output. So keep that in mind when you're using this new feature. Now I'm going to explain why we have to use a couple of these dongles here, but we can see we have the multi-view and I can do like an auto and we can see auto cut just like that. Now, if I didn't use these dongles, let's show you what happens. I'm going to unplug this and we see that the external camera support uh, disappears because there's nothing plugged in. Now, again, we just have, a USB-C cable, and I'm going to plug it directly into the iPad here. And we see here that nothing happens. Connect external camera never gets recognized that a uh, UVC comp compliant webcam has been plugged in. Not sure exactly what's happening, but you basically need to use a couple of dongles. Now, there's a couple of alternatives. You could use this one, which is a USB-C to A, and then I take USB-A and plug it back into C, okay? So I'm gonna put these two together again. I have to hold the camera like this. Okay, I'm gonna plug that one in like there. I'm gonna plug this one in like this, if I can. Okay, there we go. So now we have our dongle created and I'm gonna plug it in here. And we see now that the Webcam, well, not supported. That's because sometimes you need to flip the USB-C cable. I'm going to just flip it like this, and, and it works. So even though USB-C is supposed to be, uh, you can rotate it anyway, sometimes it doesn't work. So if it doesn't, if it first fails, flip it and see if that works. So now we have the USB view working here. The, the, other, the other alternative is to use a USB-C to USB-A cable like this, and then you just need one adapter, the USB-A to C dongle for this to work. So the 
Key point is that a straight USB-C to USB-C cable won't work necessarily uh, between the ATEM and Mix Effect. I'm not sure if that's a black magic problem or an iPad OS problem. Uh, you know, maybe something at WWDC next week, Apple's developer conference will resolve this. But for right now, that's what you need to know. Now, the next exciting thing is that you can now directly connect one of these ATEM switchers to MixEffect without having to go through the network ethernet port or use Wi-Fi. So let me show you again how this works. So right now we see this iPad Pro uh, is connected to the ATEM Mini Extreme and it's on Wi-Fi. So if we take a look at the IP address, this is 10.1.7.0, which is the IP address, the network IP address of this ATEM here. So I'm going to turn off the Wi-Fi. And now I'm not connected to the ATEM. And if I try to connect, it won't work because it's not connected to the Wi-Fi network on which the ATEM is plugged in, okay? In fact, I'll actually unplug the network cable just like that. So it definitely will not work. But we're plugged in via a USB-C cable here. And if we take a look at my network settings, we see that there's an ethernet adapter straight from the cable. And we take a look at the IP address. This is the IP address that's been assigned by the ATEM to this mix effect device. So 172.2830.90. And what I found out if you just subtract one from that number, 172.283089, that is the IP address of this ATEM mini uh, in a direct connection. So we have 172.283089. And I push connect and look, we're connected via USB, direct connection. Now, you don't get the ability to, uh, it's not charging the ATEM, as you can see, the battery's not charging, but you do have a direct connection, which is great because now I can do auto like this and the connection is seems to be pretty reliable. And USB view also works with this. So if you wanted to use mix effect directly with your ATEM, and not have to go through a network, and you have one of these switchers, you can now uh, get this to work. In fact, I just tested a direct connection between Mix Effect and my ATEM 2ME Constellation HD using just a USB-C cable and a couple dongles, and it worked. I was able to connect my Mix Effect application to the ATEM Constellation by entering the new IP address of the Constellation that I got from going into iOS settings, looking at the ethernet module, subtracting one from the IP address that the Constellation gave to the iPad. Now, one caveat is that the webcam output on the Constellation is still program output. You can't yet configure what goes out of that webcam. Hopefully, Blackmagic Design will update it so that it supports basically the same features that the ATEM SDI and ATEM Mini lineup now have with the 9.5 update. And one more thing, I still recommend using a USB-C hub in between Mix Effect and your ATEM switcher because you'll get things like HDMI out, Ethernet, and a bunch of USB ports along with power, which is probably the most important thing because you want to power your Mix Effect application and your iPad or your iPhone for hours at a time and you don't want it to run out of battery. So a USB-C hub is still recommended, although you can, in a pinch, use a direct connection now between Mix Effect and your ATEM switcher. So check it out on your ATEM switcher and report back in the comments below if it works for you. And there's more coming in Mix Effect. So with the 9.5 update, there's been some changes to what you can configure in the multi-view and they've also added SRT support to the streaming systems on these devices. So the next version of Mix Effect will have support for SRT and the ability to configure the multi-view. I'll give a quick demo, but remember, it's not in the current version of Mix Effect. It's coming soon. So, again, if we cut over to the camera here, uh, this is running a pre release version of Mix Effect 2.1.1, and we'll go to settings here. Uh, there's actually an interesting button the disable fade to black. So, another addition to the firmware is the ability to uh, disable this button. So, if we take a look here, I'm going to uncheck it. And we're going to go here and I'm going to push this button and you see that it does the fade to black and it's, it's blinking. So this is a button that a lot of people 
tend to push accidentally during their shows, but now you can configure the ATEMP just by tapping that button right there. And now fade to black button doesn't work anymore. So it's been completely disabled. Now, the new 9.5 update has not done anything to the sting button. Um, I don't know if that will ever get changed, but we'll see what happens. So disable fade to black, and we take a look at the multi-view. We have a, a couple of new options. Now the user interface, I'm still working on it, but uh, let's take a look at what this, how you can configure this. So I'm gonna bring up another copy of mix effect and it will connect to the extreme and I'll put it like this and make this look like that. Move this in like this and actually make it nice and small here. Okay, so what we can do now is we can uh, adjust the frame guides and show labels. So I can like take this preview, this, let's see, this ATEM one, which is this one, and I can add frame guides to it. So let's add a frame guide, 16 by nine, and we see a 16 by nine here. And I can even hide its, its label just like, um, Oh, that's why, because I have the USB view overlay. So no more label here. Uh, there's also convenience buttons to turn off all labels. So we can see all labels here, all off. So now we have no more labels here. And if I want to make the frame guides none, I can remove all the frame guides. I can e even remove borders from the multi view. So I can say all off, all on, and I can configure the different color if I like Let's say this blue color like that. And now they all have this blue line here. We're gonna turn those, actually go back to this gray and all off. And I think the reason why they added this was maybe you're outputting the multi-view and you wanna like cut it up uh, into little individual inputs that you can use in like your non-leader editor or something else. Um, and I hope this feature, this feature actually comes out on the ATEM Constellation 4K models. So if you output the multi-view in 4K, you can actually cut them up into four different quadrants, which are HD quality, which is actually kind of kind of cool. Um, so I'm going to, have to put the borders back on. You always could display the audio meters and turn them off, but you also have control over these individual items here. So if I want the frame guide for this one to be 16 by nine, it's 16 by nine right there. And I want to add the label just for, for this one. So there's a lot more customization with the multi-view than you could otherwise do before. So I'm going to turn these all back on, turn on my labels, just like that. So that's one thing that's coming in Mix Effect 2.1.1. Uh, the other thing is SRT support. So if we take a look at the output tab here, we have uh, SRT support. So I'm going to go here. And let's see. So SRT has this new thing called the passphrase, um, which you can set. And then if your URL for the server has SRT colon slash slash in it, it will show the passphrase. Otherwise, if it's just a normal RTMP stream, it will disable this. You can't you can't edit this. Uh, and I've tested this preliminarily with a, a local SRT server, and it seems to work. So be get ready to um test this and see SRT working on your new ATEM minis or ATEM SDIs. So in this video, we've shown you how you can directly connect mix effect directly into the ATEM to get USB view through the webcam output. Although you have to currently use a dongle or two to get it to work for some reason, uh, that's what you have to do. And also be remember to flip that USB C cable in case it doesn't appear properly. Number two, we've shown you a secret feature in the 9.5 firmware update where you can directly connect MixEffect to the ATEM over USB to control it. So direct connection of control. You don't need to use the Ethernet network anymore if you don't want to. And third, we showed you the new multi-view configuration options in these ATEM minis and ATEM SDIs, as well as the SRT support. This is all coming. Uh, at least the multi-view and the SRT and the disable fade to black buttons are coming in the upcoming Mix Effect 2.1.1 release, which I hope to get out in a week or two. This week is Apple's WWDC conference. So I'm going to be there learning all about the new stuff that Apple is releasing in iPad OS, iOS, and Mac OS, which will all make Mix Effect a much better product for you. 
any rate, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe down below and like this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Happy switching. Bye-bye.